Have you ever thought about how 2002 is the year of the twos? I mean, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clone, and Men in Black 2, of course. But, of course, today, uh, the I'm reviewing the best 2002 sequel, which you already know the title of it, considering you've read the title of this review. The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Now, Peter Jackson himself admitted The Two Towers was definitely the most difficult of the three films to make, as it was the hardest of the books to adapt, being the middle chapter. And also, they had to make some major changes to the source material, such as they wisely cut out he Shelob's lair from The Two Towers and saved it from the return of the king. And also, Aragorn and Arwen's romance, they were originally going to have Arwen at the Battle of Helm's Deep, but the, at the last minute, obviously, they decided to cut her out. So Arwen didn't do any fighting in this movie, unlike in Fellowship, which kind of peed off uh, uh, a lot of fans. Uh, but I can... Whether I agree with this or not, I'll get to that later. But The Two Towers uh, takes place immediately after the Fellowship of the Ring went, left off as Frodo and Sam are going to Mordor alone, Boromir died, Merry and Pippin were captured by Uruks with Aragorn, Legolas and Gimli on hot pursuit. And it opens with this epic, powerful prologue of Gandalf tumbling down the mountain with the Balrog, which actually shows what happened after Gandalf fell down with the Balrog in Fellowship. And that's only in the movie because of a beautiful painting John Howe did. And I'm glad it was added to the film. It was such an awesome, kick-ass opening scene. And... Uh, Frodo and Sam, uh, while they're continuing their journey to Mordor, they get lost until they meet one of the greatest characters of all time, Gollum, played by Andy Serkis. Now, I love Gollum. Gollum is such a powerfully and incredibly written character. I mean, he was once a hobbit named Smeagol who fell to the power of the ring, and it's, he's had it for 500 years, and it's, it's turned him into a monster. And, and Frodo sympathises with Gollum, uh... Because of this, uh, Frodo knows the effects of the ring just like Gollum does. Uh, however, Sam wisely does not trust Gollum because Sam will never know that. Yeah, Gollum's clearly wanting to kill Frodo and Sam. and He's putting all of Middle-earth in danger. And yet we feel sympathy for him. And so, as Gollum's about to strangle... Ghoul Sam, Frodo does the only awesome thing he ever does in this trilogy, and he puts Sting to Gollum's throat, and he's like, this is Sting, you've seen it before, haven't you? Release him, or I'll cut your throat. So, uh, Gollum uh, pleads for his life, and Frodo's like, Frodo realises Gollum does know the way to Mordor, and he could be their guide, and even though Sam wisely doesn't trust Gollum, Frodo... He shares Gollum's understanding of the ring and doesn't listen to Sam. So Gollum leads them to the Black Gate and first they go through the Dead Marshes, which is a very eerie setting and such an outstanding set. It was actually filmed in a car park. And we also get this beautiful moment with Frodo and Gollum where Frodo says Gollum's actual name is Meagol. And as the trio arrive at the Black Gate, as they're just about to walk into Mordor, Gollum at the last minute stops them and says unexpectedly, you know, there's another way into Mordor through a stair, which is an obvious plan to kill them and get the ring for himself, to which Sam realises this, but Frodo still not listening to him very stupidly and trusts Gollum again. And so as they go out into the wild, Gollum gets these two rabbits and wants to eat them raw. And I love the moment where Sam puts them in a stew and uh, we get that classic line, potatoes, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Yeah, that's a great remix, isn't it, guys? Anyway, then the trio are unexpectedly captured by these Aphelian rangers. And meanwhile, back with Merry and Pippin, who are being taken to Isengard by a group of Urukai, with Aragorn, Legolas and Gimli on hot pursuit through the plains of Rohan. And Legolas... Uh, sees that they're taking the hobbits to Isengard. Yeah, that's a classic remix as well, isn't it? And Saruman and Sauron have formed the union of the Two Towers and are preparing to destroy Middle-earth. Now, that's one thing the Two Towers greatly improves over Fellowship. It clearly raises the stakes. You know, Fellowship felt very much like a set-up, just kind of a road movie. 
but this movie feels like a proper war movie. So as Merry and Pippin uh, are about to be eaten by the pack of Uruks who have rested for the night, luckily for them a group of Rohan led by Aemir just come and slaughter the Uruks and it's left unknown whether Merry and Pippin survive. But he was in the next morning, Aragorn, Legolas and Gimli meet up with Aomer, who kindly gives them some horses, and they reach the burning pile of Uruk carcasses and think they were too late to save Merry and Pippin. And then Aragorn just kicks this helmet and screams, Aaah! To which we all know by now, Vigo sadly broke two toes kicking that helmet on the fifth take, and Jackson used the take in which Vigo broke his toe because it was the best performance of the five. But Vigo must have been pretty peed off at the time. Anyway, Aragorn discovers that Merry and Pippin thankfully survived and fled into Fangorn Forest where they meet the shepherd of the forest, the leader of the Ents, Treebeard, voiced by John Rhys Davis. Now I know a lot of people don't like the Ents, they call them the weakest part of the two towers, but I love the Ents, I, I like them, I mean they represent Tolkien's belief that one day nature will fight back against the machine. So our Aragorn, Legolas and Gimli continue their search in Fangorn, who should they meet but Gandalf the White. Yeah, Gandalf came back as Gandalf the White after his battle with the Belrog. Now a lot of people like Gandalf the Grey better, but I honestly can't see the difference. They're both awesome. They're both cool. I mean, Gandalf the Grey was a lot of fun, but Gandalf the White's the more powerful and more badass of the two. I mean, when Gandalf was Gandalf the Grey, there was a little hope of defeating Sauron, but now that Gandalf's Gandalf the White, Sauron, you're screwed. So, Gandalf, Aragorn, Legolas and Gimli ride to Edoras, capital of Rohan, where they meet Sir uh, King Feoden, who's sadly under Saruman's curse, and Grim, a worm tongue, his evil advisor, is poisoning his mind. So Gandalf performs this exorcism on Feoden, and, and he gets Saruman out of Feoden's body, to which then Feoden's niece, Eowyn, played by Miranda, also runs up to him, and Feoden changes back, and you're like cheering, he's finally come back. And he throws Grima out and Grima runs back to Saruman and Gandalf wisely tells Feoden that, you know, uh, Saruman is about to destroy Rohan and that he must fight. But Feoden very stupidly is like, I will not bring further death to my people and orders his people to make for the fortress of Helm's Deep. Now let's talk about Eowyn for a second. I love Eowyn. She's so awesome. She loves to fight, but Feoden never lets her fight. He just uh, tells her to protect the women and children. I bless her. And uh, she has this romance storyline with Aragorn, who she clearly loves him, but sadly he doesn't love her in return. Well, because he's already with Arwen. Now, a lot of people complain how Arwen, she doesn't she, does, she doesn't do crap in this movie, but she still has a great and compelling storyline. She wants to stay with Aragorn, but Elrond uh, refuses to let her. And uh, he's like, uh, he will die one day, but you won't. So you will live forever without him one day. So he convinces her to go off to the Grey Havens. And while they're on the way to Helm's Deep, uh, the Rohan get attacked by these Warg riders. And during the battle, Aragorn sadly falls over the cliff with one of them. Now, this is not the first fake out death in these movies. It's happened many times uh, as well. But we kind of know Aragorn's gonna survive. They killed the tension in the trailer. However, it is a cool way for Aragorn to see the approaching uruk -Ar. Meanwhile, Frodo and Sam have been captured by Faramir, who is Boromir's brother and Prince of Gondor, and he very stupidly falls to the power of the ring as well, and he's like, the ring will go to Gondor, putting the whole of the world in danger. And so, meanwhile, Aragorn returns to Helm's Deep and informs Feoden that there's a big Arsurukai army, 10,000 strong, at least on the way, and that they must prepare for battle, and it's 300 against 10,000, uh, kind of like 300. But why would Feoden order the women to just get to shelter in the caves when any thinks the kids are better fighters than the women but luckily for them Heldir and the elves come to give the men a, one last bit of assistance so the battle of helm's deep happens as one of the best battles in movie history it is it has ladders it has explosions it has great fun bands up between legolas and gimni to see who can kill the most uruks and it's just the the best possible climax uh, to this movie, but sadly our heroes are quickly overrun by the Uruks until Aragorn tells Feoden to ride out with him at dawn, to which they do so, and luckily 
a miracle happens. Gandalf arrives with Eomer and the Rohirrim as reinforcements. They charge down the mountain and the Uruks are completely defeated and our heroes have triumphed gloriously. Then back with Merry and Pippin and Treebeard, the Merry and Pippin are trying to convince the Ents to go to war, and thankfully this happens right on cue when Treebeard sees that Saruman has killed all these trees, and so the Ents assault Isengard, and it's awesome, the Ents just whoop ass, they completely defeat all the Uruks there, and Treebeard's like, it's likely they go to our doom, well... That's complete nonsense. If the Ents were in every battle in this trilogy, the good guys would win in one second. So the Ents flood Isengard, and yes, we're all so happy. Saruman's completely defeated, and back at Osgiliath, when Sam tries to convince Faramir to let them go, he's like, You wanna know what happened to Boromir? The ring drove your brother mad! And then a fell beast comes over Osgiliath at with one of the ring rays and Frodo almost willingly gives the ring to one of the ring rays until thankfully Sam uh, gets Frodo at the last uh, second and Frodo almost kills Sam but luckily Sam convinces Frodo to just let go of the power of the ring and listen to what he has to say and Sam gives this beautiful speech it's one of the best Lord the ring scenes hands down he's like there's good in this world Mr Frodo and it's worth fighting for. So Faramir sees the error of his ways and finally decides to let Frodo, Sam and Gollum go and continue on their quest very wisely. And while this is happening, Gollum's bad side of his personality sadly takes over and he decides to lead them to a spider named Shelob and she will eat them and Gollum will take the ring once and for all and what a brilliant cliffhanger that was. I bet people back in 2002 could not wait for Return of the King after that. So that was The Two Towers and some say it's the best, some say it's the worst Lord of the Rings film but personally I think it's neither. I think it's the second more than worthy follow-up to Fellowship. It's funnier, darker, the stakes are much higher, it's certainly more action fat. Here it feels very much like the Empire Strikes Back of Lord of the Rings. I know some people might have issue with the female characters not really doing anything and uh, the stakes not being so high for our main characters like Frodo never getting hurt and Gandalf coming back to life and none of our main characters die. Even Peter Jackson himself said he was worried that they might have a disadvantage with nobody dying in this film. However, I don't mind that so much because, well, it's only the middle chapter. It's not the definitive beginning or definitive ends, and the stakes do get much higher for our main characters in Return of the King, so that more than makes up for that. And also the female characters, they actually do get to fight, especially Eowyn in Return of the King, so again, that makes up for it too. And uh, but the fact that we knew Eowyn loved to fight and she was strong and feisty, that was enough for this movie. And also the soundtrack of this movie is beautiful. While it probably is the weakest soundtrack of the three, it's still awe-inspiring and epic to listen to. And I love uh, the beautiful Gollum song at the end, great end credit song. This movie also introduced two great new characters, Gollum and Treebeard, brilliantly brought to life. Battle at Helm's Deep. What can I say? It was awesome, it was epic and kick ass. And uh, just the two towers, it's a brilliant uh, second part in this trilogy that gets you excited immediately for the final chapter, Return of the King. I'd give the Lord of the Rings the two towers. So, what do you think of the two towers? Please comment down below and let me know. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.